Good evening, Kenya. Welcome to Point of View. And NASA, Pekine, Cloudlight, startup businesses and incubation. What do all this refer to? We will find out after this short break. And we are back. Today we will be looking at the intricacies of what is a startup, bu startup business and what incubation is. Today in studio with me, I have Nylab CEO, Sangishu. Welcome to the studio. And um, he'll be taking us through these intricate details and giving us a better breakdown on what these terms mean and what exactly he does and the company he represents. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Nylab. What is Nylab? Oh, well, um, most people try to define Nylab as an incubation hub. Mm -hmm. um, we do fit in that category, but we are more of an accelerator. Okay. So guess now I've introduced two new words to Indeed. the conversation. <laughs> so Nylab stands for Nairobi Incubation Lab. Okay. Now, the I could mean incubation or innovation, okay? depending on how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, we were called iLab. Um, and the idea behind iLab is to make sure that anybody who wants to build a business can actually do this within three to six months, mm -hmm. be able to find out whether their business is viable. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if they find that their business is viable, then they can launch the business straight after that. Okay. So our job has always been to accelerate. But for you to accelerate, we also needed a space to incubate. Okay. Yes. Okay. So incubation just is the same word. I mean, a lot of times they say, uh, we are an incubator, people start thinking about eggs. It's the same process. Take something that is not mature, put it in a place where it can mature, and then after it matures, you release it to the world, mm -hmm. and it's ready to stand on its own. All right. Yes. So that's exactly what all the stubs that's come it. to mean. Exactly. The incubation of, uh, of, 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 an, of an egg is mm -hmm. the same incubation for a business. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, um, a lot of uh, the, the incubators and accelerators have been related to technology-related projects. Mm -hmm. Is this what Nylab is doing? Now, by default, our technology companies um, are able to pilot their projects faster. And that's why uh, most of the success stories will be technology companies. But incubation and accelerator do not necessarily incubate technology companies. Mm -hmm. So other companies may take a longer period of time. But the media will always love the stories of companies that they are sold in two years, in three years, they are short. They are, yes, and most of those are technology companies. Mm -hmm. They're easily scalable, they're easily repeatable, you know, so they're easy to scale and sell. Mm -hmm. So incubators will work with any type of, of, um, of companies or any type of um, subsector of the economy. We have the CIC right now at Strathmore. They're dealing with climate change. Mm -hmm. And so they're incubating people who have interest in the issues of climate change. And that may be a little bit far off from technology. Uh, could go to agriculture, renewable energy, and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so what does NAILAB do? So for, for, us, for us, we want to believe that we don't incubate technology companies. We incubate the companies that use technology to deliver services. Okay. Yes, so technology is more of a tool for us, mm -hmm. yes. All right. Um, the business is what we want. I want a business that makes sense to the end user, to the consumer, that m makes sense to the customer. Now, when you look at that business, can you deliver that business using technology so that it reaches more people mm -hmm. and works better? And that's why we, we might be inclined towards taking businesses that apply technology more than businesses that don't. Because the future is definitely tech. Indeed. Yes. Indeed it is. Yeah. Now, who are the brains behind Nylab? Well, um, quite a number of people, actually. Um, the first person I'd mention is Tony Domo, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, my co-founder. Uh, he's now doing uh, his own startup. Uh, the other two people are Bart and Anna. They're both Dutch, mm -hmm. uh, who funded our initial launch of the platform. Mm -hmm. So between myself and Tony, we, we met up and we had an idea to say, let's provide a place. Initially, ideally, it was let's just provide a co-working space mm -hmm. for people with a similar interest. I said, people who want to build a business, put them in the same space, let them co-create, collaborate, learn mm -hmm. from each other. Mm -hmm. And then we realized there's a really big gap. There's a big gap in skills, there's a big gap in knowledge, there's a big gap in between them and the media, them and the corporates. And so we restructured and decided we're going to build an incubation hub. And so I, I put the initial four founders of Nylab 4, mm -hmm. Tony Dongo, myself, 
Bart and Anna, currently only three of us are still operational. Mm -hmm. yeah. Given that we're in Kenya, a developing world, which is a hub on its own for uh, technology, new ideas and all that, what would inspire you to, to, uh, to come together and put such a, such a thing to, uh, to into one piece? Now, number one, there's a big misconception. Mm -hmm. And this might sound a little bit like we're bragging, but before the hubs and the labs existed, mm -hmm. Kenya was not a hub of technology. It wasn't? There was nothing happening. Mm -hmm. There was only M-Pesa. I mean, an M-Pesa by itself as a product does not necessarily turn us into a hub. That would be like saying Skype turns Estonia or Angry Birds turns Finland into, into a hub of gaming. Mm -hmm. So hopefully hoping that I got those two, com two companies right from their country of origin. Mm -hmm. But before the hubs came into play, before the labs came into play, there Kenya was not a hub of technology. So we are the ones who created it as a hub of technology by creating the hubs in the labs, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, I think, and the idea was the first thing is that every, every, other, every other profession is scattered. Journalists are scattered all over. Uh, lawyers are scattered, Do doctors are scattered. If you create hubs for lawyers, mm -hmm. journalists, mm -hmm. and doctors, then you, you will, th tomorrow the conversation changes. Kenya is a hub for yes. journalists. Yeah. You know, Kenya is a hub for lawyers, you know, because you see it and you, you're able to bring change mm -hmm. just by having I mean, one creative yeah. space. Yes. Let me take you a little back to um, the whole technology question. Yeah. Uh, given that your target is businesses that um, use technology as mm -hmm. a tool, mm -hmm. would it be um, for anybody coming up with a startup and uh, let's say they're not literate or they're not uh, well techno technologically versed, would they be an ideal fit for you as Nylab? They'd not be an ideal fit for business in that sector. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, um, uh, this is a really, really an ongoing argument right now where people say the techies and the people who can bring the technology into business on one side and the people who can run a business on the other side. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that that's very true. We need a marriage of both. Yes. So if, say, for example, you're a really, really business savvy person and you have been in the industry for a long time, so you understand your industry, and there's a tech person trying to disrupt the same industry, it will mm -hmm. be interesting enough for both of you to form a partnership. Mm -hmm. That does that. Now, as a business person alone trying to disrupt the tech industry by hiring techies, not by bringing them on board as equal partners, but by hiring them, mm -hmm. your chances of success become lower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna be in any type kind of business, if you're gonna be in a restaurant business, please be a very good chef. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Uh, yes. The, don't imagine you're gonna hire a chef and then you're gonna give instruction to somebody who knows better what to do than you do. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'd say we try matching the two. Make sure that if you have business and you bring in and say, I'm the CEO and this is a CTO, there's always a CTO because you're using technology and this is how we structure that business, then you're a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. One or the other sometimes becomes a problem, but it's easier for a CTO, a tech person, to learn business than it is for a business person to, to learn the tech, the tech side. Yes. Okay, all yeah. right, that's yeah. very true. Yeah. Now, we were having this discussion mm -hmm. earlier, incubation labs and hubs, what is the difference? Now, we structured... We, we call ourselves lab because we are really lousy at branding. Uh, we should have gotten a better name. Because mm -hmm. again, a lab mm, makes you think of, of something medical. Yes. Okay. Um, now, around the world, we have hubs. Uh, and I think one of the biggest franchises is impact hubs. And what they do is that they create, they provide a core working space. Mm -hmm. People come and they just work. They don't necessarily have to be followed up. They don't necessarily have, we just can't pay for membership. You have a place to work from, yeah. okay? Yeah. And this is people who are freelancers, people who have interest in certain sectors. So hubs do provide that particular service. Mm -hmm. Now, as a lab, as Nylab specifically, we are an incubator in the sense that anybody who sits in our space is a company we have invested into. All right. Yes. So you're building something like Cat Planet, and there's a, you're, you're seated there, you're building something, you're invested into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we work with you, we have a training program, we have events, we have uh, access to mentors, mentors, access to media, access to funding. Those are the kind of things we create. Mm -hmm. Extreme, now, in the, in the last two years, we actually give money as well. Not give money, we invest money. Okay. For you a have piece a stake of, in we have a stake in the business okay. for a piece of equity, mm -hmm. um, for a, a small piece, which is 10%. Um, and so we are very vested in the business. We are not just an open space where you come and work and go. No, mm -hmm. you want to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and you have a limited period of time to be there. All right. Yes. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. We're taking a short break, viewers. When we come back, we'll be looking at um, the whole process of acquiring a startup. 
from Nylab and from an incubator's point of view. Keep it point of view. Thank <laughs> you.